American filmmaker Michael Moore have said that members of his racial group have committed the worst crimes in history, but somehow they have convinced the world that black people are a threat. Most people agree with this statement, but have you ever wondered how was it actually achieved? How is it really possible that in spite of a brutal history of the contrary, that the oppressors are most often favorably perceived as being the racial group possessing the highest ethics and moral standard, and we, their t brutally tortured victims throughout history, are more often perceived as being the group possessing the lowest moral character. Let's review the historical facts. Throughout history, the oppressors have demonstrated an almost complete absence of ethical or moral behavior and an almost total disregard for the human lives of other racial groups. Their subjugation, murder, and exploitation of all other groups are unparalleled. The reason why they're now most often favorably perceived and we're most often now negatively perceived is because public perception is not shaped based upon facts nor reality. Public perception is actually shaped by the media contents that are repetitively fed into society. Because the white population controls the media contents that are repetitively fed into our society, they systematically feed distorted media contents into a society that falsely exalts and, are, and exonerates their racial group while falsely criminalizes and marginalizes ours to validate their mistreatments of us. The public function based upon what they repeatedly see in the media rather than reality. Here's an example that proves that the public function based upon what they repeatedly see in the media rather than reality. Presently, many people deem the mentioning of black cowboys as being ridiculous. Many accuse black cowboys of committing cultural appropriation of white culture. But the true reality is that the first cowboys were in fact black. The term cowboy was originally a derogatory term that white field hands assigned to black field hands. Before bronco busting rodeo became a sport, the wild horse were brought to the black cowboys to break in, to break them in, tame them. Those black horses, those, um, those uh, black cowboys, they started competing with each other and now it became a sport. The original cowboys were in fact black. However, most People are not functioning based upon this true fact and reality. They're instead functioning based upon those movies and TV shows they've seen depicting original cowboys as having been white. Most common beliefs and perceptions held by a society were hardwired into the collective consciousness of the public through repetitive media propaganda programming. It's called media social engineering. The media shapes our perception of reality. The problem is that the media lens to which the public perceives reality has been distorted and warped by the white controllers of the media. They've not only distorted public perception to make us appear as bad and themselves appear to be the good people, they've in fact distorted the entire perception of reality. The basic tool required for the distortion of reality is to merely repetitively feed distorted media contents into society. The public at large will then begin functioning based upon those narratives instead of the true reality. This is what the white society have done. Your perception is a white deception. In the U.S., the largest recipient of welfare are white people. The group that commits most crimes are white people. The group that invent most inventions are black people. Your perception of reality is an elaborate white deception. The, it's the real matrix. The real matrix is not a red pill. The real matrix is an elaborate perception management system that distorts the public perception in ways that serves and protects the system of white supremacy. Perception management is a propaganda technique that involves altering the public's perception of reality to suit the objective of the ruling class. Perception is more important than reality for controlling people and for steering society towards an applied objective because people function based upon their perception of what's true. Perception can often be more potent than reality because it shapes our beliefs, our opinions, and our ideas about the world around us. Our perceptions have been distorted 
to create and sustain false assumptions within a society that aids the white society in maintaining its social dominance. According to a white social scientist, in order for a dominant population to maintain its position of social dominance over its subordinate populations, the image of the dominant group must be exalted above those of the subordinate populations. Doing so conveys a subliminal message that the dominant group is inherently superior and is therefore supposed to rule over its subordinate populations. The, exalt the, the exaltation of the dominant group makes the subordinate groups more compliant with their dominance over their lives. White social scientist describes nefarious practice as merely instilling a value system into the collective mind of the subordinate population that makes us adhere to the authority of the existing um, and infrastructure of the dominant culture. This is deemed necessary because people are inherently tribal and therefore do not normally accept the long term dominance of other racial groups over their lives. This is especially true of the group racially furthest from the dominant group. Because we are the furthest from the dominant group, they deploy additional propaganda for us. They constantly inundate us with black racially demoralizing propaganda until many of us begin to doubt our own ability to govern ourselves and we believe that we therefore need whites to govern over our lives. It misleads many of us to believe that we're better off living under white dominance. And therefore, we abandon all hopes of ever liberating ourselves. This propaganda campaign not only makes many black people more compliant with white dominance over our lives, it in fact makes many of us even prefer it. And as long as they keep our minds within this condition, they can then rule over us forever. It is the reality. If you don't think that the white society exploits their monopoly over the input of what's fed into our minds to manipulate us to think in ways that serves and protects their interests, you're a goddamn fool. Because it's the people they are. It's the way they've always been. And it's the only way they know how to be. The general population doesn't know what's happening. And it doesn't even know, it doesn't know. And that's a quote from Norm Chomsky. While we studied our Bibles, believing that it contained the true words of God that would protect us, white oppressive forces studied instead how to manipulate our collective minds to serve their interests. They then used that gained knowledge to mentally enslave millions of us. Since we now put more emphasis on studying our Bibles, we, are, we therefore have little understanding of how our collective minds are presently being manipulated by white oppressive forces. Our study of religions have left many of us intellectually behind in our mental growth. Therefore, we are easy victims for those who have studied how the mind works and how to manipulate our collective minds. This is our reality. This system was implemented in response to the 1960s unprecedented unified black protests. It's to assure that it never happens again. Because of this system, this white supremacy now strives and operates like a well-oiled machine. Black people will never liberate ourselves using outdated foot marches against this modern racist system. We must elevate our understanding elevate our tactics to match the system that's probably being deployed against us. We must elevate our minds about biblical fairy tales and silly slave syndrome myths and learn this system. When we attempt to confront this sophisticated system relying on our Bibles, we're making damn fools of ourselves. It's time to wake up to our reality. One love and peace.